Oh, forgot to open the window. pretty. My youngest kid made this for me many years ago. Stim jars. Okay. Hi. Feeling a lot of visual things. Not sure if we're starting with that or with this. Put on, I did not delint myself. And when I watch these back, I always am mortified at the amount of hair and cat hair. I think this is gonna be impossible. I don't have a lint roller easily on hand up here. So we're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> don't mind, don't mind me. The mystique of Magdalene Oracle was like screaming. I was feeling, and I still am feeling very strong feminine energy. It's soft and fierce, rich and deep and flowing and strong And ref I don't want to say refreshing, rejuvenating, aligning. It's it's an opening. It's an energy of being in a space where you are opening. And you're in a calling out. I'm not sure if that's the right thing, but it's an opening to receive, but it's an invitation. The invitation is you being in a place where you are more solid. You are more in alignment with your authentic self and you're being it. And so you are magneting, magneting, magnifying, emitting, omitting, It's doing this. What's the word? You're the, the frequency, the vibration of the frequency you're omitting is one of an invitation. It is an opening, which is an invitation. I hope I'm making sense. Because you're open and you are ready for this next phase of your life of whatever that is. And it has something to do with receiving, but it's also receiving and in, in communion or in collaboration or co-creation with another energy. It's not just you, you're, you're still you solo, but you're opening. It's like blooming and at the same time inviting so that you can bloom even deeper. Does that make sense? That's what I mean by feminine energy. And a lot of the cards are feminine. Are all of them? Yeah. 
They are. They are. We two of them aren't in their Oracle decks. Sacred Creators deck and a Sacred Self Care deck. Totally different um, authors, but I never realized they have the same name, kind of. Okay, hold on. Are these going to happen right now? Very intense gazes. Very from a place. Look how fierce both of these. All of them. Doesn't matter what gender you are. This is the energy you're embodying. Fierce, strong, sensual because it's grounded. Because there's no there's no doubts from where it's from you from where that energy is originating. It's, it's your foundation. You've built it. You've built it. You've taken, and you've taken steps already. And you're about to go into the next phase. I think I'm starting to realize, I think that's when my re readings come through for me, my readings, that whatever. Um, like when, when people are going through from one phase to another. You know what I mean? <laughs> Gotta love that one. Okay, she's upside down. Hmm. You are stepping into, or you are in and stepping into, you are the strongest you you've ever been so far in your life. And you are continuing to deepen it and grow it. And the more you do that, the more fierce you become. You're already fierce, right? And you're taking all of your magic that makes you so fierce, your awareness, your integrity, your connection with source, with, with the all, you're taking it and you're bringing it out. You're letting it come out of you. This is different energy coming in. Hold on. I think I'm gonna take my socks off. <laughs> Take them off. They're like, yeah, I've had them on all day. I don't usually wear socks in the house, but when it's cold, dirt. But my house is colder, much colder than it is outside right now. But I am, um, I'm on a bunch of meds. I have a bunch of health stuff and um, they make me ill. So my temperature is very wonky right now. Okay. Hmm. Oh. There's such a deep sadness in you. It is a sorrow. It's sorrow. I think you're starting to realize 
that the sorrow, this most recent event that caused this deep sorrow is really connected. The sorrow isn't from losing that. What's, what's underneath it is the sorrow in losing yourself in this, but originally whenever your core wound began. I'm not sure if I'm making, I'm being clear. I don't know how it connects exactly, but there's a connection here between you realizing and recognizing the current situation that you have, this active still sorrow, or even if it's an echo, it's still, you are still reverberating with it. And that was something that was very sorrowful. And that was something that you were deeply wounded from. And it's a betrayal on, a, on it is at its origin, at its truth, it's a betrayal of trust. Hold on. There's a connection. The root cause of what you're really grieving, the root cause of the sorrow is the original wound. You're really missing yourself. The part of you that got robbed that got squashed, that got stifled, that got whatever, that got ignored, cut off, whatever it was, that wound. And you've done a lot of work. But there's something, one very like persistent theme or that is you're still, you haven't all the way let go of it yet. This is the card. And this is the second card. I didn't even look at the first one, which is not traditionally at all how I do tarot, but like, I'm, in, I'm going with the intuitive. Aren't these beautiful? It's haunting. It was, it was enveloping you. Surrounding you, it's been surrounding you your whole life, as long as you can remember. And this last thing, just that was it for you. It was the deepest betrayal. And you don't have closure. She's got a letter in her hand holding it to her heart. And that, I don't know if you can, if the cameras folk can pick that up, but that shadow here looks to me like a male face, a face. And then these little guys, little lights in the background. It's tied to something, it's a betrayal. It can show up in any way, in any way. But it's definitely showing up as some kind of partnership, which probably I would look at the core partnership because that was probably familial. And then the most, the one that made you hit your bottom, which was probably not familial, but could be, could be, but may not be. Because for some, it's definitely a matter of the heart, no matter what. That's why the betrayal you can't get betrayed by something, right? That your heart isn't connected to in some level. Can you? I don't think you can. 
but it was in the reverse. And I don't know if these cards go in the reverse, be read in the reverse, but I feel it. I see it energy-wise in the reverse. Let's see what one came out first. She who hopes. Renee. Rane. I think it's Renee. It's Ran. R-A-N-A. -E. Love, hope, relationships. Yellow and green and orange and... <sighs> Look at that. I can't tell if it's fucking focusing. They both have yellow and green on. She who surrenders and she who hopes. There's a peace that you have that you have not had or haven't had in a while. But it's staying. There's something different about it. And, and what I feel it is, is that it's staying. You're able to get back to it. You're, you are more aligned than you've ever been. So kudos. And this deep, deep sorrow that has to, is connected to vulnerability. You can't let it, you have no closure on it. And I think it, you're confused because there's something about it that you believe it's connected to perception you're you don't know the the truth of it so you're having a difficult time completely letting it go I feel like that's not. You, there's something about it you don't accept. There's something about letting it go or being over it itself that you don't accept and that you can't continue to fuel that not non-acceptance anymore because you're you your personal self with your life and health you're literal in this world all of the stuff that had been happening emotionally and mentally was showing up now physically and physical symptoms and things around you you can't do it anymore and you don't want to and you haven't you're still journeying out she's on the bridge she's on at like She's not moving, she's contemplating, but she's going on a path and this path is going to the bridge. And this boss, look at her alignment. All of them, all of the, the images we've seen so far, there's a deep sensuality to all of them because there's a strong sense of self that is unwavering. And it's battle-worn, battle-worn. That's what I should call this. <laughs> I only have a presto. Wait, I need to write it down because I always forget them. Let's see if that wins. Okay. Let's see what it says. Let's look at, which one should we look at? I was gonna look at Rane. Rane? Nay, Ray, Nay. It's very Queen of Pentacles energy. 
it's saying that you're open and you're open specifically right now to love in the form of a co-partnership, a partnership with someone. And you're at a place where you don't need it. You're open to it. You're ready to hold it. You're, you're ready to take the first steps, you know, the journey to holding it. I don't know. Like, like you're, you know, when you go to the gym, it's like a journey and you have to build up and that's where you are. You have a whole different outlook on love and everything. The lens you're looking at everything has changed everything with has changed because you have expanded more you have deepened every time uh, i'm you've expanded in the way that like your energy is now rooted into the earth and then up to the ether and you've been able to maintain it never give up hope that's what it says. Your dreams of love are possible regardless of any history indicating otherwise. You've come a long way. Battle-worn, right? When you are able to look back and see how every connection has brought you to this place, you begin to build your own bridge from loneliness to happiness. That realization that what you're really grieving is the, is the original loss of yourself, the true loss of yourself. And that no other person out there can give it to you. And now you literally, you know how to do that. You could be that for someone else. Instead of that, when you have those deep sorrow feelings or grief or whatever it is, visualize your you holding, comforting that energy. Give it a visual of whatever. It works. It works, it's real, it's not woo woo hoo ha, it's not. You'll feel it. Always remember you must crown yourself first. No one else can make you see your own worth if you don't already own it. It's literally when they say be the be the the adult your little your inner child needed your little you needed you are the adult it doesn't have to be external you're not replacing that you're now redirecting it you are a co you are a creatrix in and of yourself creator creatrix creatrix you, you feel me Believe in love. Believe the lessons of the past were simply to give you opportunities to become the amazing human you are now. You already know this. All of you already know this. So the questions, there's there. Are, what have I learned from past relationships? What kind of partner will stand beside me? What am I doing to attract the kind of love I deserve? Let's pull Tyro Willett. That is implying there's a little bit more assessment on your side and action to be taken in a practical way. You wanna come out? The Nine of Wands. The hardest part is about to be over. You are uniting. All of your parts of you that have weakened are strengthening and you're like Voltron forming. <laughs> you're creating a circle. What's it? What's a coven or whatever? Use whatever word. Inside of that is like a, is a, do you see it? Like a matrix, a web, a grid. I don't know what you would call it. You could call it any of those.
for those of you who are really, who have found yourself right now struggling, anyone struggling on any level, this is your message to not give up. You are so strong. You are as strong as you know you are. And it is safe for you to fully embody it. And you are. The nine is taking action still, even though you're ex fucking exhausted. And it's like stressing on your physical body too. But it's like equal men. It's like, oh, where you like, you, you really are like, I, I cannot, like you're about to give up. But you're not. You're not going to. Why? Because you're smart. You're smart. You love yourself. You're smart and you love yourself. You can't always see the periods. <laughs> it sounds like I'm lecturing. I am a Libra five times. I'm not lecturing, but it just comes off that way. It can come off that way. That's why I have Cancer, Moon, and Rising, I think, to balance my five Libra placements, which are Sun and Venus and then whatever, whatever else. You feel me? Okay, let's see here. Might not be these. I really like the way the altar looks today. It's so pretty. So much selenite. It was almost a little, it was almost too much for me. It was a little bit. And that doesn't normally happen for, that's actually never happened before <laughs> with me, with selenite. Cause that's my thing that grounds me. Hmm, what was that? Oh, it's my capo fell out of my ukulele case, which is my, under my feet. I love tarot. That's the bottom. The Ace of Cups, the Page of Wands. Ace of Emotions in this deck and Page of Inspiration. That's what's on the bottom in the split. We started this reading out saying you were in a place where you were opening, right? And you were calling in, you were magnetizing things to you and you were ready to receive. Literally look at this and guess what's underneath it? This is all of you in a full, you are fully embodying the feminine part of you. You a boss ass bitch and a boss. But it is time right now. This is all focused on the feminine, which I'm hearing it's safety. It's safe for you to be, it's safe for you to be in your feminine energy. Maybe for some of you who are confused about what that is, it's things that you start to feel defensive about because when you stop and you look at what the root is, you feel vulnerable and open and that's a feminine trait, being open. You're seeing vulnerability as a weakness because someone way back showed you, treated you like it was because they, they abused their power over you. And it was at a time that it formed the rest of where you went, the, your view, your lens, how you looked out and how you thought was looking in. Battle worn to this. Let's look at this progression. Yeah, this way. Okay. Should we do it this way? 
<laughs> Sorry, everyone. Yeah, that's how you should see it. Look at that. You are flowing and you are magnetizing. The page of wands and the page of cups. It's a synergy. Everything you have been working for dreaming of, believing in, doubting sometimes. It's about to come true, all of this stuff, all of the good. Let's see what, what the cards are. Do we do that first? That's a no, no. I'm feeling these guys first. They're this way. Ace of Wands. <laughs> Fire and water, so much flowing and heating and charging and rushing and receiving and pulling out, pulling back and harmony. That's what it, it is. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. You're sending your signals out. You're sending them out. They're also, you're also attracting them in. You're not calling them in. Your frequency that you are on, like think of it as a radio station, your radio station has opened. So now it can receive more channels than it could before. You feel me? The five of wands is what, okay. There's a little part of you that there's a part of you, it's still echoing your self-doubt. Wait. It's the, it's the reckoning you're having, the recognizing and the reckoning because of the toll it takes and just eviscerates everything that doesn't serve you. Of you, your team and your squad is you. Is all these different sides of you. It's a, the integration of them. And that is connected into your acceptance of these paths that are being handed to you, opened to you from the universe. Everything you've ever dreamt of and all of your, all of the ways that fuel your passion, you know, when you think like, could be career wise. It can, it's literally going to be on every everything that um, every avenue in your life that you are not fully living your fully authentic self. It like you're not fully experiencing yet. Like maybe you aren't in the career that doesn't feel like a job, but you're doing what you love. You you that is where you are. You're in the calling in of that. No, you're not in the calling in of that. You're in it.
Yes, you've accepted it. You've accepted the invitation to be your own hero and your own healer, but I'm hesitant to say that, but yeah, because you are recognizing, this is tied into your recognition of you and divinity and source energy and that it is one and the same. And that is the, that is the one and the only one that matters. And that is the relationship that you always fuel and you always, always, you know that and you've been doing that and doing that is what allows you to have everything you've ever dreamt of right now. You're about to be delicious, living a delicious life. It's so whatever you are battling, keep going. Don't fight it. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay, don't give up. Keep putting in the work and keep believing in you and keep putting yourself first. Keep putting yourself first. Tend to the care and keeping of you. I'm hearing this sacred self-care. Let's see. I'm thinking of my friend Deb who um, we Zoomed this morning and did like a reading and that is what I've been feeling it coming through for maybe now a week, but it wasn't the time. And then that just happened pretty spontaneously. Like yesterday, like, Hey, you around tomorrow, you know? And she was like, yes. So, um, that opened it up. So grateful to Deb. Thank you for, thank you for that. And I had reached out to her. So this is a, to you all watching, follow your urges. For me, if it repeats, it's something to take account of. It's something real. You have to look at it. Because it could be real because you're choosing to be out of control, but it could be real because it's, a, it's something coming in. You'll be able to tell the difference. You will be able to tell the difference because you know you. What's for you won't lower your vibration. So things may be difficult, but they don't lower your vibration. They're challenging, but they don't lower your vibration. You understand? Look out for stuff for that. Burning Bowl Ritual, number seven, Spiritual Path. Oh, fun, 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 fun. Sound Healing, 47, which is 11, which is Soul Purpose, and 46, 10, which is Completion of a Cycle, Soak in a Bath. I wish I could, I can't because my health stuff, I cannot right now. Okay. Burning bowl ritual. I'm sure, this, I'm sure these are pretty straightforward. Mantra. I surrender. She who surrenders, remember? Estefania. Estefania, they're all dope. I surrender to the fire of transformation and allow light to guide the way. Connect with the fire element to release whatever is no longer serving you and to manifest your desires. Okay, so there's instructions. Ask yourself these questions and write down the answers on individual pieces of paper. You don't have to do this, but if you feel called to it, go for it. And if you want to share about it, do it in the comments. 
excuse me, what old stories about you, people in your life or the world do you want to let go of? What experiences have you lived through or conquered that require acknowledgement? What thought patterns, beliefs, experiences, or people do you want to let go of? The homie in the in the in the hill, but in the stone. What do you want to manifest? Tarot is ridiculous, right? But nine of wands don't give up. Okay. After you do that, prepare a safe fire, burn your pieces of paper, and send your wishes off into the universe for manifestation. You can use a campfire, you can use whatever. As you watch the paper burn, imagine your wishes as if they have already happened. So see them happening as they're burning. Take what you wrote in the past and then see it happening. See the healing, the closure, the closing off, the letting go, the dissipating of it, the dissolving of it. Imagine yourself free of worry. Imagine yourself liberated from what's been holding you back. Say to yourself, and so it is, so it must be. Here's a journal prompt. How do you feel after completing the fire burning ritual? Is there anything more you'd like to release? All right, let's look at sound healing. I found a really great sound healing YouTube thing. If I can remember which one it was and remember to link it in the comments, I'll put it in the comments below because it was, for me, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. Oh, I opened up right to it. The mantra is, I receive healing energy with grace and ease. That's this queen over here. Boom, boom, boom. That's this one too, son. Specific sound frequencies, like the love frequency of 528 hertz offer unique healing energies because of the way they resonate with our cells and water in our bodies. Sound healing often involves a mix of crystal bowls, didgeridoos, gongs, tuning forks, and other sacred instruments to create a vibrational frequency that brings on a deeply meditative and dreamlike state, often resulting in visions memories and bodily sensations that illuminate areas of life that need attention. Seek out a sound journey based on a specific mood, frequency, chakra, or environment. So pick one of those or whatever, just. With more and more options out there, you'll find something that's just right for you. Okay, saying yoga, you can journal, journal prompt, participate in the sound healing and write about your experience before, during, and after. How do you feel in your mind, body, and heart? 46. Oh, whoa, those two are right in a row. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> you guys probably realized it. I didn't realize it until you just saw it in real time. They're literally both right there. Okay, the mantra is, I let the healing waters restore me. I so need to get near a body of water and I also super need a, look at that. That can be my replacement for the water right now. I would, I gotta get myself to an ocean and put myself in it and, st and hopefully be able to do that for a good long period of time. Baths are an ancient ritual for energetic and bodily cleansing. Gather sacred items like crystals, candles, essential oils, and flowers and sink into the warm water. Imagine the water washing away all that no longer, no longer serves you. 
Connect with the beauty of the meaningful objects you've assembled and imagine their illuminating energy and radiance bathing you. Plug into the frequency of it and then let yourself expand from it. You don't take from it, you learn how to coexist with it. Take your time when washing your hair and body, cleansing and pampering, pampering yourself like a goddess, that feminine part of you where it's like, yeah, woo, are you receiving? And you're like, ooh, allow yourself to do it. Afterward, nourish your skin with natural oils and creams. Makes a huge difference, it so does. I never thought I'd be one of a person who did who was into any of that and I am right now. I just brand new. It's, it makes a difference. Brush your hair slowly and softly. Give yourself a breast massage. Fully relax and stay naked for as long as you can, enjoying the feeling of your body. The journal prompt is how can you make a bath feel more like a sacred self-care ritual? Well, this reading was fucking fantastic and I hope that it helps you guys um and fucking A for y'all fucking A keep going keep fighting warrior you got it you got this and it sounds I don't this is dope you're dope you're kicking ass you're kicking your own ass and you're standing tall. Keep going. You got this. You do got this. Take those wands and make them into a motherfucking crown. Put them on your head and carry that goddamn cross up the hill naked with your, <laughs> whatever. Keep going. Don't fucking give up. Don't give up. And just to balance out the Jesus imagery. Ciao, ciao. Thanks for coming and sharing your energy with me. Till next time.